Kunameset River is one of the largest rivers on Cape Cod. Just as the Kunameset winds through the center of Falmouth, Massachusetts, it also wove its way through the history of the town. The Kunameset has always been an important river for migrating fish and other animals. As Falmouth grew, the river was altered by people who settled here to fit their changing needs. These changes may have been good for the people, but they were not so good for the many animals and plants that depend on the river for food and shelter. People who cared about the health of this river decided to restore it to a more natural river system. Although many rivers flow from lakes, streams, and other rivers, the Kunameset is fed by water from underground aquifers as it flows down to the ocean, a remnant of the glaciers that formed Cape Cod. The restoration of the Kunameset brings it back full circle to a time when herring were plentiful and the river ran free for its entire length, while providing a natural corridor from the ocean to one of the Cape's largest freshwater ponds. Students from Falmouth schools plan to visit the restored river. They're excited to understand the problems the river had and what could be done to improve our Kunameset. We now join two volunteers from the Kunameset River Trust as they discuss the problems on the river before restoration and plan the student's trip. Come on in. Hi, Gemma. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thanks for coming, Gemma. Um, I know you've been studying the river and uh, we're having our fourth grade field trip to the Kunameset River, which is being restored. And, um, and I thought you could help me with uh, some of the, the work that we'd like to do to prep the students before they come. Um, I wanted to figure out what the problems were with the river. So I think it would be really great to have um, this opportunity to teach the kids about um, some of the problems that are on the river. The story starts for us with the Wampanoags, and they, of course, fished in the river, but they were respectful of the river. They really didn't uh, do any damage as far as we know. However, when the Europeans came, uh, they were used to using rivers as a way to uh, get energy and uh, to support their farms and things. And I found these pictures, too, that kind of help us along. Uh, you know that back in the day, uh, the river was uh, used uh, for uh, mills. Uh, there was a textile mill here, right at Dexter's Mill. It was called Dexter's Mill for that reason. And there was also a grist mill that came before it. And you know about mills, um, they want the wheel to go fast so they can get the energy and so they they use a dam to keep the water back so that it flows uh, heavier. And they did build a dam there. The mills went away though, but look at what was left there. Wow, I can imagine that'd be very difficult for anything like fish to get up if they're, you know, going up the river. Yeah, right. Now, you know, the herring can go upstream pretty well. They can, they can pretty much get through this at times, but I'm sure that there were times that they couldn't um, they don't jump, you know, not like salmon. Okay. They have to sort of swim uphill, and I think this would be pretty difficult for them, so it probably kept a lot of them from getting to the Kunameset Pond where they would like to be to spawn. But you know, the Kunameset River was named not after herring, it was named um, Place of Long Fish. After and, the eels? Yes, the eels, and the eels couldn't get up the river at all because they don't have the capability of doing that. So lots of other fish probably couldn't get by this. Now, after the mills went away, um, cranberries were really, really popular in the Cape. They're native to the Cape and uh, there were a lot of cranberry bogs that sprouted up. This one was built with a river right through the middle of it. Everything that happened in the cranberry bog was in the river too. And what do you notice about that cranberry bog? It's just open land. When you think of a river, oftentimes you see plants along the edges and you know sh places for shade, but here it's just open, open land and it's just very flat. Right, it's really a farm. I know they call it a yes. cranberry bog, but it's, it's a farm and they like for it to be level. And also it's an upland and it can drain into the river easily. 
there was another thing that the growers did that made the cranberries uh, the cranberries grow very successfully, and that is to put sand all over. So what do you think? They put sand around in the river. I mean, it would cover up, you know, the natural rocky bottom that we have along the rivers. And for the herring, they're much darker than sand. Oh gosh, you know, I never thought about that. Yeah, so yeah, it makes so... them very visible to, you know, predators. Oh, and here comes the osprey, and like, oh, there they are. They're yeah. right there. I can see them so clearly. Yeah, and, you know, because it covered the rocky bottoms, it also limited the amount of insects and other things that, you know, grow and live in the rocky bottom mm -hmm. of the river. So there was less food for the fish to eat, and it also limited the amount of plants that could grow because it was very, um, it was built very much for the cranberries and not for any other plants that were in the area. It looks like the cranberry bog is kind of destroying the natural features of the river. But you know, those people were farmers and they did what they did because that was good for their crop. And, and you know, in those days, they didn't really understand a lot about the natural features of a river and that you could really destroy a river by changing it. Another thing, they straightened the river that normally goes back and forth. Do you know, do you know what that's called? I think it's called meandering. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I wanted to make sure that the kids knew what that meant too. In an industrial way, I guess people thought straight was better, you know, I can control it better and all, so. Yeah, and then with the, you know, straightened channel and, you know, the water's flowing much faster, it sort of also widens the river. Oh yes, when it's shallow um, and there's no shade because it's a crop, there was no way to keep the water cool, so it got really warm, and a lot of living things really are much happier in cold water than warm water. Cranberries, it's all one crop. It's a monoculture. It's a monoculture, right. And there's something about a monoculture, it's opposite of nature. We always talk about these diverse natural areas, and with a monoculture, you got to get rid of weeds, yeah, it's, I mean, it's much easier to, you know, use pesticides and other chemicals. You know, we've listed a lot of the problems that we've seen on the river, and I think it would be interesting to see how the kids would um, come up with solutions for these problems. I think it would be great for the kids to get together and try to figure out how they would solve the problems. And then when they go to the river, they'll find out what the scientists did. I wonder if uh, they'll think of some of the same solutions that the scientists did. Yeah. Well, why don't we let them go to the river and we can catch up with them later.